and I want to welcome all of you here to this beautiful live summit to celebrate Jen Larson, who is one of our newest published authors at Freedom House. So my name is Kira Polson. I am the CEO, founder of Freedom House. Freedom House Publishing Co. is a publishing house that publishes transformative books. So we are here to change the world through transformative expression in the form of published books. And it is my absolute joy and my absolute honor to hold these summits so that our authors can be celebrated. These are not, um, these are not easy books. The books that we publish aren't easy books. They're not books that are easy to write in the sense of emotionally, they take a lot because these books take everything inside of a person to bring them into the world. And so I, I love these summits because we have to really celebrate the author that they said yes, that they brought through and birthed this book. And I have so much love for Jen. Jen and I, are we actually go back quite a few years. We've been friends way before I even owned a publishing house. And then we moved to different states and I started my publishing house and she went in and lived in Montana. And then I ended up moving to Idaho and somehow our lives still stayed in the same connection energy. And so it's just my absolute honor to publish your book, Jen. Jen, I'm just celebrating you so big today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been quite the journey, right? <laughs> Yeah, together yes. and in this process, but I'm grateful that I could do it with you. Mm. So it's such an honor. I want to start off with the summit is going to be a mixture of whatever we want it to be. Every summit's different. Um, I would love for Jen to talk about her journey with this book. I just want you to share what led you to write the book because many people are going to watch this replay and I want them to be able to know you and your heart behind this book because the book is amazing and when you know who brought it through it even adds more magic to it so can you start by sharing with us a little bit about your story and how this book came to be yeah of course so we will go back to when I was seven years old my dad was a sheriff deputy. And so to, in my eyes, he was a hero and he was a hero to lots of people that he was able to help around the community. But um, he was the, the strongest man. He was Superman to me, but mm -hmm. he um, ended up having a grand mal seizure. And that led us to find out that he had brain cancer and he battled brain cancer for about six years. And so I saw lots of scary things throughout my childhood, lots of um, these seizures and lots of unknowns um, happening. And so um, when I was 13 is when he had passed away. And so a huge part of my heart just absolutely broke and shattered and um, was trying to figure out how do you navigate life without one of your parents? And so that was really hard for me. And then I remember being at a church fireside where they were talking about journaling and recording your life story and how important that was. And they had mentioned in there that when we record our experiences in our life here on earth, that is also recorded and sealed in heaven and that the angels can actually quote from this life book that you have. And in that moment, I realized that um, that must mean that my life really matters. Mm -hmm. It matters not only here on earth, but it matters to my heavenly father. And that meant that my, my dad's life was important and that he mattered. And that even though he wasn't here on this earth, um, how important and special he was and the things that he did while he was here was important and special and could leave an impact not, not only here with us, but he makes an impact in heaven. So I started um, journaling. I was like, okay, I'm going to give this a try. And it was wonderful for me. I um, have stacks of journals and um, it was a great way for me to process these emotions that as a young kid, I didn't understand what was really going on within me. And I didn't understand that what I was doing was grieving. I didn't even know what that word grief was at the time. I just knew that my heart was broken. 
And so um, I noticed that I felt relief every time I wrote. And that, and just that feeling of the relief was enough for me to keep going. Now, I didn't journal necessarily every day, but I did often and just would write about my life and my feelings. And then fast forward in 2008, my husband is a contractor, he's a builder, and he um, built us this big, beautiful home. I had, I had just had my fourth child and fourth daughter. And um, on, in July, uh, we had a big pool and my third oldest daughter, who was two and a half, her name's Camber, got through our pool fence and she drowned. And so once again, I was found standing in disbelief because I thought I had already paid my, I guess my price on my hard thing in life, right? By losing my dad at a young age. Um, I had this belief that you only go through one hard thing in your life. So I felt like I had already done it. So when my daughter passed away, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to survive this? And I almost didn't. I got to a point where um, I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't understand how I could live with this um, broken heart. And so I had spoke with my husband and told him how I was feeling. We got me some help, but I had realized I hadn't been journaling and decided to start again. Um, I had remembered that my mom had a brother. Um, he was quite a bit older than her. So she wasn't born when this happened, but he was almost two when he had passed away in a horrible accident. And my grandma had journaled. And so I had asked my mom and aunts, where are these journals that grandma had? I have to figure out how do you survive this life without one of your children? And so I wanted to read what she did because I was grabbing at anything that I could to know, to give me a reason to stay on this earth. And so I was really sad to find out that her journals had been lost. So I was like, okay, if I'm staying here, I am going to start journaling. I want something for my family and for my children to be able to have if they have to go through something like this or anything that's hard in life, they will be able to read my words because I decided I was determined I'm staying on this earth and I'm going to become better because of it. So that's where the journaling started in my adult life. And like I had said before, it had released a lot of this energy and sadness that I um, had felt every time I wrote. And then I started seeing God's hand in my life, little tiny miracles along the way. And I wanted to remember them and keep those. And so I journaled. Now, fast forward again to last year in February of 2021. Um, we get this knock on our door at midnight, which is the time that our daughter Kylie, who was 18, she was a senior, was supposed to be home. And it's the sheriff's department from our town that we live in. And he um, told us that there had been a rollover accident and that three children, three teenagers had passed away from her high school. And they believed that Kylie, our second oldest daughter, was one of them. And we, of course, were in disbelief. And it plays out exactly like you see on the movies and it's horrific and you go into shock. But my husband and I often said that we could never survive the loss of another child. And that's the one thing I told Heavenly Father, you know, I survived my dad. I've survived Camber. I've, I've made it to where we found joy again. We accepted this new normal that we never wanted in our lives but we had accepted it and found a way to move on and have happiness and a full life again. And then here we were again with the loss of another child. And I was, so my husband had said, I said, I cannot do this again. And I said, I know I can't either, but we don't have a choice. And so we started our journey of going through loss again and 
you know, everything we believed and knew was shattered and on the floor in front of us again. And we've had to pick up these little pieces. I like to describe it like is if you take glass and you were to throw it on the ground, how you can have just really sliver of pieces of glass. And then sometimes those pieces are a little bit bigger, but you pick up these little slivers or these bigger pieces and you look at them and do I believe you today? Can I put this back to my heart today? Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. But I started journaling from day one. I did not want to forget not a single memory or a single moment of any of it. So I started journaling most every single day in a book. I just had notebooks at the time and I would just write. And then sometimes I would post on social media, but um, I, I, I was feeling some relief again. I definitely was seeing God's hand. Kylie was very much showing up in big ways in our lives, really big ways to end um, to where you just, you couldn't doubt that it was her. So of course I was recording these and I came to a time about six months later, actually maybe a little later than that. I actually think I was closer to the year mark. So um, anyways, I was starting to recollect some of these um, experiences that I had had with her and in the process that I wanted to go back and read on days that I was really struggling. And so I would search through these pages and sometimes I would find these experiences, but most times I would not find any of these experiences and I would become really frustrated. And I was like, oh, this is, there's got to be a better way to journal than just all these pages. So one night I went to bed and had this dream of this journal. So I saw this Give Hope journal that had sections in it and it was organized. And in, I could see that I had my memories and my experiences in specific spots in this journal and me being able to go back, recollecting something and knowing right where to go. And it was, it was awesome. And so I woke up the next morning and that realized how vivid that dream really was and had the feeling, I need you to create this journal, mom, but you're not going to just do it for you. I need you to do it for everybody that's grieving and hurting. And that was really scary to me because I felt like I was in a really tough spot in my grieving process. I was almost to the year mark. And so all these emotions were coming to the surface. And I was like, now you want me to create this journal <laughs> when I am having a hard time. But she said, yes, now you need to create this journal. And she told me specifically that you need to reach out to Kira. And I was like, she is rocking it in her business. She does not need me with my little journal. <laughs> To, to do and so but it kept nagging at me and nagging at me so I finally said yes to it and I text Kira and she said yes to me and I was so so grateful and so we started the process of this journal that I knew was going to go out into the world and I wanted it to bring hope and that's how we got the give hope title was um in particularly in Kylie's funeral we had a friend give a talk and we wanted him to talk on hope. And in his talk, he said, let's start a hashtag of give hope because that is what Kylie gave to so many because we had people coming out of the word works telling us Kylie was the one that would go and speak to my son in the back of the room. He's always so quiet. He didn't have very many friends, but Kylie every day would talk to him or another girl um, had said, I had lost my brother last year and Kylie was right there to talk to me. And I knew in that class, I had someone that I could talk to that would support me. And so lots and lots of these types of stories came through. And Kylie was a person that she'd say, I didn't have a ton of friends, but then she'd go hang out and hang out with a bunch of friends. And I was like, you little stinker. She had so many friends and she had no clue the impact that she was having in high school with all these people by just including whoever she could 
telling her story of losing her sister. There was oftentimes she would share her testimony of that and how it gave people so much hope. So I knew that that's the title of this journal was to give hope because we wanted to give that to each of you, everybody. Man, I can't hear your story without just so many tears of just honoring you, Jen. Thank you, Kira. You have not had an easy path. And in the midst of so much grief, you were able to create a book that I have received more messages from people just saying like, I gave this to a friend and it's already changing her life. I was able to give it to a, an author that we're publishing right now. She's working on a book and she lost a daughter a year ago. And she just said like, it gave her so much um, like momentum of like, okay, I'm, I can create my book. Okay. And so I just, I honor you that you followed the yes, you followed the inspiration, even when the timing didn't feel right to you. Yeah, most definitely it did not feel right, but it was the right time. It was right. <laughs> it was, it really was. And I would love for you to show everyone your book. It's so beautiful. Oh, yes. So <clears throat> I have this paperback copy, so it's really easy to flip through. And this is the back. It just tells a little bit um, of things that I like, like two things in life change you the most, and it's love and grief. Um, and then I also have the, the hard copy, which is just as beautiful. And it looks the same. Yeah. Yes. So, so and beautiful. it's beautiful inside. It's um, It's got lots of quotes. Um, and notes from me to you that explains why these sections are in there and um, just little little pictures that I feel like Kylie and Camber would have wanted in there. So it has a little bit of them sprinkled in along with um, a lot of love from me to each of you. Mm. It's so beautiful. It's, it's so beautiful. Even I remember watching when the book cover was coming together, how how you knew the energy you wanted the book to be. And it came through. I mean, it's a holy book. Like it feels sacred. It feels holy. It feels reverent. Yeah. It's really, it's exactly what um, I could feel in your heart. I, I'm, what I'm hearing right now is, can you share some stories about how you felt your daughters working with you while you brought this book to life? Yeah. So, um, in this process of this book, I was also in the middle of going to life coach school, which I, is Kylie's fault too, because she came and was like, mom, I need you to do this. And so I, I coach moms and women that have lost children, but I also coach um, people that have lost a close family member. And, um, and I love it. It's, it's the best work ever to be able to support and love on people that are going through grief and having a hard time to find um, joy in their lives again, because it, very is it is very possible to grieve and live a full and happy life. Um, and you don't feel like that at the beginning, but with time, you can absolutely. But um, so anyways, with that being said, um, I was wanting to add more to this book, maybe add a little bit of my life coaching um, tools in there um, instead of keeping it a little more simple. And every time I would do that, I would get stuck and not know what to do and um, would just have like a, a writer's block or things would come up in my life and I'd go a couple days without even working on this journal. And I'd be like, why does this keep happening? And finally, one day I could hear her I or God saying to me, like kind of reprimanding me. Like I said, to keep this simple, stop trying to add what you want to it and write it the way it's meant to be. 
And I knew all along it was supposed to be kept very simple, but I was trying to do this, something more elaborate. But um, so anyway, she showed up very much. It was like, that, you know, this isn't right, mom. This needs to be more simple for um, those grieving. Because when we're grieving, we have a lot of brain fog. It's hard to concentrate for very long. And um, so I knew that this needed to be beautiful, but simple for you guys to use. I love that. I'm, I'm seeing, I don't know if you told me this or if I'm just seeing it, but was there a, was there a moment on the treadmill? There's something about a treadmill and a song in Kylie. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, well, it might have been for before the podcast when we were Maybe talking about it was. the book. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I um so I had been sleeping the you know at night and I woke up in the middle of the night and I could hear words saying like you have a podcast tomorrow to talk about the book and I was like no I don't I was pretty sure it was the next Wednesday and no and it kept nagging at me and waking me up and I'm like I knew it was probably Kylie I'm like I don't and she's a very persistent child and so um anyways I was able I I looked and I had written it down wrong but so I was convinced I was right like see I told you Kylie I just looked at my paper it's not it's not till next week but the next morning I got up and started working out and um I was on Spotify and some songs that she liked and reminded me of her started playing over and over like new songs and so I was like, okay, Kylie and I are going to work out. She's here with me today. And um, then all of a sudden, Kira's text comes through. Are you ready for a podcast in about an hour? And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yes, Kylie was right. I, I did. I had that podcast. So I quickly got ready and just prayed that she would help me through it. And she had me pumped and ready to go. So, um, yeah, she very much shows up like that. That's so beautiful. Life. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I just kept seeing that image. I was like, what was the story? It's such a great story where she's like, mom, I'm prepping you. Get yes. your energy ready. This is yep. happening. Yep, we're doing this, mom, whether you're ready or not. It's today. <laughs> oh, it's so good. That's so good. Yeah. Well, I would love to open up the space for anybody and no one has to, but I, I think that it's a great opportunity to either share with Jen even your own personal experiences of loss or to share what you've experienced with the book or if you have any questions for Jen, um, this would be the space and time. So we'll open that up for you all and um, just unmute if you wanna share. Uh, okay, I can share. I don't yeah. really have any um, past loved ones that have passed away. My father passed away in 2014, but nothing recent, um, but I bought Jen's book because I was just so happy that finally I, I have people that lose loved ones um, around me at work, in my church, wherever, my neighborhood, and I, I never know what to get them. It's just such an awkward time. I remember one time I brought huge bouquet of flowers and my friend was like, what's this for? You know, and then I, another coworker had, I bought him like this little moon thing. It was so awkward. I don't know. So when this came out, I was just so grateful that now I have something to give to my friends and coworkers. And it's, I just, I just love, love the way that it's organized. Um, I'm horrible at journaling and I love the organization in it. And just like going through it and seeing the heart to heart section is just so everything she writes in here just really like touches deep down inside. And I don't even have like a, a lost story, you know, so I just I like you said, it's so sacred. Yeah. So oh. awesome. Thank you, Lo. Thank you. I, I really think, Lo, you bring this, this is why I felt so passionate about helping Jen publish this book, was like, Jen, this book has to be in the world. I'm just like you, Lo, every time someone goes through loss, I freeze up. And when I'm normally like real good with my words, like that's actually mm -hmm. like my gift in life. I have nothing. I like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. And all I want to do is like, do something and the 
I can't figure it out. And now it's like, Jen, thank you. I bought like 15 and they're just in my, in my closet, in my bookshelf so that at any point I can bring this to somebody. And I know, oh, like this, this is actually going to support them. So yeah. I love that you brought that up low. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Jen. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Sure. Because this, this was needed. This, you ah. filled a gap, a mm -hmm. hole that so many of us have been experiencing as on the outside. And not only just the people who are going through loss, but us on the outside who want to support and love. Mm -hmm. Well, I often would get people, so camper has been gone now 14 years and once you lose a child um, people kind of come out of the woodwork and so they would we'd often get phone calls will you speak to our friend that lost a child or uh, a family member that lost a child and give them advice is there any or they'd ask is there anything we can do for them what can I give them what's the best thing and you know flowers are beautiful but they do die and jewelry is beautiful and wonderful to have. Like I have some necklaces and I love having my kids' names close to my heart. And, um, and I'll have those forever, but sometimes jewelry tarnishes. But a journal is something they will have forever. And it becomes a sacred keepsake, not only for them and helps them through their grief, but it also is a sacred keepsake that can be passed down for generations. It'll help your kids and your kids' kids and as far down as it goes and um, uplift them and help them anytime they're going through something hard. And then they get to know their, their mom or their grandma or great grandma on a whole different level. So this affects generations to um, have these journals. Mm, oh my gosh. I just saw that. I saw that like rings, like golden rings, um, moving from generation to generation. Like you are blessing and changing a generational line yeah. with this book. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. You don't have to wow. see in it anything. Like it's so pretty, you guys. It is so pretty. Just wrap some ribbon around this and you don't have to say anything and just give it to them. It yeah. says everything for you. And it's made with so much love that they will know how much you truly love them when you give them this journal. I promise mm. you, it will be something so special for them and they might not use it right away. And that's okay. It will be used at some point. I promise. Mm. Oh my gosh. It's so beautiful. I see that. I see it being on their bookshelves. And then there's going to be one day where their loved one who, who they lost is going to come in and say, today, you pick that up. Yeah. Like it's going to be in their home. It's going to be in their life. And then they're going to know when it's time. Yeah. And that's going to be a connection piece to them and those they lost. Yeah. Well, and I wow. think oftentimes people don't realize that you can create and continue that relationship that you have with your loved one just because they pass from this life doesn't mean that that relationship ends it it'll be a little bit different but it can be just as beautiful and sometimes more beautiful of a relationship than you had with them on this earth so mm -hmm. it absolutely helps cultivate those relationships with them after they passed and i was um, just thinking beautiful. um I was kind of scanning through this while you were talking earlier and I was just like blown away reading about like the memories, my favorite memory with you is, and you know, I have a husband and I have a son and it just makes me want to love on them so much more. So this like even helps with the living. Mm -hmm. And now I just want to go and make like the best memories with my husband and my son who's still here. So, I mean, and that's the effect that it has on me, not even having, you know, lost them. So it definitely like makes my heart so tender towards my family and those around me. That's wonderful. I love that. I feel that. Yeah. For sure. Ooh, I feel that. That is, that right there feels, what came to me when you were sharing your story at the beginning was like, I've got to make better memories. 
Like that's mm-hmm. what just came in so loud. It was like, I gotta like, I have got to get out and connect deeper with my loved ones. So your ripple effect is large. Yeah. And I'm going to use this actually for my love, my loved ones now living because it's got a lot of memories, tender mercies. Like this is something that I could use right now. Yeah. As a section, be still my soul. I love that Mm -hmm. section. That Mm -hmm. section is where you write anything that comes to mind, anything weighing Mm -hmm. on your heart, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, that's exactly where it goes. And it's a place of no judgment. You're not allowed to judge yourself in that, in that section there, because it's you getting to be your human self. Mm -hmm. And we all have the good, bad, and ugly emotions and thoughts and feelings. So I like that. Yeah, I just can't stop crying. It's just, it's just rolling. It's just here. I'm so tender with this. Is there anything that anyone else would want to share or ask questions or just be a part of this conversation? Don't be shy. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, Jessica. I know you got something. (laughs) So like, um, interestingly, my, um, this like goes way back, but my mom lost uh, my uncle, um, my uncle was 17, similar, um, got in a car accident and passed away really suddenly. And it was my mom's like first wedding anniversary. <clears throat> so she was still pretty, pretty young. She was, uh, I think 21 at the time. And, um, and I just keep thinking about how like awesome it would be. Cause like, I always hear about my uncle, but like, do, I don't like, there's so little about that, right? Like, it's just like casual. It's not like real memories and like the power of being able to like read something like that. I'm a journaler and I've always kind of felt like when they describe him, he had a lot of characteristics that were similar, similar to me, like struggles and things that were similar. And it would be so neat to have those memories or to have that journaling. Um, if, you know, my mom or my grandma or someone else had, um, you know, had, had done that or had that at that time. So I just think it's, I think that's like a really powerful tool. And I love the idea of being able to do it, you know, now, like, like you were saying, like to, to make those, those memories. I have books for my kids that I do, um, where I capture different memories as they're growing up. And I've always like, think like, in case if something were to ever happen, to me on um, like the reverse, like they would have these, like my memory of them, you know, being born or things like that. Um, so I love the idea of like making those memories and capturing them so that they could, um, or, or so that I would have those. That's beautiful. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And you said it was your mom's brother. Mm-hmm, yeah. Is she still alive? Yeah. 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 So she can totally start writing everything that she remembers. That's what I was thinking. Forward. Yeah. Yeah. And my grand, my grandma's actually still alive. She's, she's 90. Oh, wow. um, yeah. So um, she's, you know, like, you know, she's 90. <laughs> so she's, yeah. like, she's like semi there, but, um, yeah. but um, yeah, I think it could be really powerful to have them be able to, to fill that in. Yeah. Yeah. And if she can't write another um, piece of advice is, record her talking about it. Oh, that's beautiful. Then you always get to have her voice for when she does pass. You get to remember exactly what she sounded like as she's telling this life story of hers, of how she's built. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I could host this summer. I don't know what's going on with me. I was not emotional today. I am just I was feeling so much presence from all just like all these loved ones on the other side just like how grateful they are that you created this like I can feel it like way beyond us like I can feel all of these loved ones of people who will get your journal and how grateful they are that you wrote this it's like a tether for them to connect. Yeah. Well, maybe I should share this experience then since that's what you're saying because it keeps flashing into my mind. 
So um, not long after Kylie had passed away, you know, just really sad and wanting to have a dream of her. I just wanted to see her to know that she was okay. And this was probably months later. And um, she finally did one day come to me in a dream. And we were in this church building and she's standing there. And I see so many people that I knew here on this earth and that she knew well up on the stand. But it's like, it's hundreds of people. And some of them I do recognize and some of them I don't, but I know in my heart that they all knew her and she knew them. And then I look out away from the stand and there is thousands of people out in the audience, thousands of them. And she says, these are the people that have impacted my life and then the people that I have impacted. And being kind and loving and being who you are, you have no clue the impact it has here on earth and in heaven and for generations to come. And it was a huge eye opener for me that our lives really do matter. And you never know the impact that you're really having on those around you. Even the person in the grocery store that you just give a smile to, you have no clue if that smile is what just made their day. So um, anyways, you talking about that, it's, we, we don't. We have no clue the impact and how many people that love us on the other side that run to our aid daily to uplift us and to help us and to lead and guide us. It's been, um, you know, maybe that's the biggest lesson I'm supposed to learn from these losses is how thin the veil is, how really close those on the other side are. And to share my testimony that I know there's life after death. We have eternal life and we get to be together again and with our savior and with our heavenly father. Oh, Jen, thank you for sharing that. What a beautiful vision. That's like a, that's a vision. That's like an embodied experience, yeah. right? It was pretty, it was wonderful. It was beautiful. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I just want to thank you for, for being you, Jen. You know, this is me not being your publisher, okay? <laughs> like, I'm a pretty introverted human. I don't actually make a lot of friends. And I remember the day that you walked by me and I knew that you were my friend. It was like the weirdest thing. Like, I just knew like, oh my gosh, she's my friend. And we really haven't spent much time together in our lives. Like probably the cumulative, what, 15 hours, right? But like, yeah. you, you are my soul friend. And so I just have just so much massive love for you. Um, and just like the warrior that you are, that you have faced the battles, that you have faced with so much courage and faith. And that instead of going inwards, you have poured love outwards. Thank you. I love people. And I, I just, I don't want people to hurt. We can create so much more suffering in our lives. And we don't have to. So if we can help each other, that's the best gift. It's just to love each other, right? Yeah, so beautiful. Well, ladies, thank you for being here today. Is there anything else anyone wants to share before we close up? Anything that you want to share, Lindy or Pamela, before we kind of move towards the end of this? Um. I just want to thank everyone for being here in a world of busyness and groceries and work and clients and children that you made the time to come and be in this pocket. This is like sacred energy that we got to be in today. And I just am really honored that you all came here. Um, I, I always like to ask the author if there's, if you want to drop into your heart, Jen, and just feel if there's a message that is just burning in your heart to share before we end, what would that, what would that message be? So my favorite quote or mantra, and this is just what I live by and how I came across this is before Kylie passed away. 
um, I happened to speak in church on hope. And it was literally two weeks before she passed. And I had come across this quote that I really liked and really struck my heart. And so I used it in this talk. But it, um, it says the joy we feel in our lives has nothing to do with the circumstances of our lives, but everything to do with the focus of our lives. And that's Russell M. Nelson that said that. And I love that, that what we focus on is what we create and what we have. And so if we can focus on the joy and the good, we will create that and have that in our lives. And little did I know that two weeks later, I was going to lose our second daughter and be in the depths of, I would say, hell. And, um, but I remembered that quote and I have hung on to that ever since that day that I, regardless of the fact that I've lost Kylie and Camber and my dad, I can move through grief and have grief, but I can have joy and happiness and a full life and create that for me and for my kids and our, our entire family and help to share that and spread that in the world. We don't have to suffer in our grief. We can be happy and we can move forward and moving forward doesn't mean leaving them behind it means taking them with you and creating something beautiful and possibly even more beautiful than you had before mm. Mm. thank you thank you jen thank you oh, i want uh everyone here i'm a big breather so i want everyone just to take a deep breath in breathe into your heart just like honoring the magic of this sacred energy, honoring the love that's here and the energy that you got to experience by being in, uh, in Jen's space and feeling her love and feeling her heart and, and this beautiful creation. So just take a nice breath in, honoring all of this magic, this beautiful miracle. <sighs> and with that, I wrap you all with so much love. Jen, I love you so much. I am so honored to be your publisher and let us continue to pour this book into the world because there are so many crevices and so many tunnels and dark holes that people are hiding in. And this book is gonna help bring them back into the love and the light that they so deserve. So I'm here helping you in any way I can. Everyone here, go share this book. Yes. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So love you all. Have a beautiful day. Thank you guys. Nice to meet you.